Hi, welcome back. So today I've got an interesting project for us to uh, go through. So I have a, this is an exhaust cap from a vacuum pump that is broken. Um, and I'd like to remodel this in CAD, free CAD, and then uh, 3D print it and replace it. So I've actually pre-disassembled this and, and cleaned it out because it is a, it is quite greasy. Um, and if you don't know, the vacuum pumps have an oil inside of them. And this goes over the exhaust and it's got a, a filter here. Um, I've got it in this bag because it just like leaks oil all the time. Um, and it, it filters the uh, aerated oil out of the exhaust, you know, before it spits it out into your, uh, your garage area. Um, but this is a, a kind of simple container. This particular one, you know, is obviously injection molded. Um, and it's got this kind of twisting uh, bit that goes on the top. This bit is actually fine. The part that broke off here, as you can see, is this uh, thread part. So this thing here, if I can, uh, if I can draw here, this thing here, you know, has a, uh, a part that connects to the vacuum pump like this. And then there's a big like oil reservoir down here and uh, this part screws in. But unfortunately, you know, this thing got uh, like cranked over and uh, it, it ended up snapping off the threads because there's only like one or two threads of engagement down here on the bottom. So not very many. Um, so that's, that's basically what happened. And I'd like to replace this. And I thought this would be interesting because uh, you've got some kind of odd threads here. This is a, a very big thread, and this is like an even bigger thread on the inside here. So uh, to start off with, I think we'd uh, go through the thread experience here. So I'm fairly confident that these are metric threads. So I've pulled up a, a metric thread table and I'll go through and uh, we'll see if we can attempt to identify some of these threads. So I've got a, a pair of calipers here and we'll start on the bottom. So this part of the thread, I guess I'm, I'm measuring the biggest diameter of an external thread, approximately 29.21. So external diameter of a uh, thread, that would be a major diameter here. So major diameter 29.21. Um, not quite any of these, um, but I suspect they probably were aiming for a, a, a 30. So we'll go with that and I'll, uh, I'll print off like a test piece. Um, I guess we'll see if, if it takes too long to print off a test piece. And if it does, then uh, I, I will print off I guess a smaller bit, um, but we'll get to that bridge when we uh, when we need to cross it. And then for the, uh, I guess the other bit of the uh, thread call out here, the pitch. So the pitch is the, I guess, distance between one thread to another. This is specific to uh, metric threads, this particular section of the call out. If this was a, uh, I guess a, a unified thread, it would be, one over the pitch. So this is, I guess, millimeters per thread. Whereas if it were unified, it would be threads per millimeter or threads per inch if you were using the, uh, the correct measurement tool. And I'm just going to uh, eyeball this here with my calipers. They're kind of difficult to get in there, but it appears that it's about uh, one millimeter basically on the dot. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident uh, in modeling this particular section as a, a 30 by one thread. So I'll uh, let's see, write that down. And then uh, for the other side of this thread, I guess this big thing here, we'll see if we can, uh, we can grab that. So I'm going to be measuring the, I guess, the smallest diameter of an internal thread. So that would be the minor diameter, approximately 52.55 there. 
So we'll see if we can uh, we can locate that down here. Looks like there are some kind of funky 52 threads just showing up. So uh, let's see the external. I guess this would be the minor diameter of a female thread. So this column here and down here 52. Maybe we're looking at like a, uh, a 55. Maybe we're looking at like a, uh, a 52. Um, difficult to know, difficult to know. I suppose um, we'll look at the, uh, the threads per inch or I, I guess we could measure uh, this kind of bigger section here. So this would be the uh, same measurement that we were doing before. This is the major diameter of an external thread. 53.3 so major diameter of a uh, external thread right here um, come down here 53 so it looks like we're probably in this 52 range although that's kind of a toss-up uh, maybe they didn't hold their tolerances super well this is quite a uh, it's quite a loose fit you know, I mean, if I tried really hard, I could probably just force these two together, you know, without using the threads at all. Um, so I think we're probably looking at something around this 52 area. And uh, of course, we will measure the uh, the pitch and I'll measure it on this because this is going to be much easier to uh, to see. And since I've actually got multiple threads here, I'll measure across a few of them. And Let's see. So I've got a uh, about a 4.5, and I'm measuring across one, two, three threads approximately. So I shall uh, pull up the calculator here, do a 4.5 divided by three, and uh, it looks like we're looking at a 1.5 on the dot. So I'm going to. Uh, I'll start out by modeling this as a. Uh, 52 by 1.5 and uh, we'll see if it uh, ends up being something different. So I will get rid of a few of these components and by get rid of I mean set them kind of over on the side of my placemat area to give us more space. And I'm going to uh, switch over to FreeCAD here. I'll make my window a little bit wider. I've got a uh, file loaded up for us right now. So I'm going to uh, start by switching over to part design. And I'm just going to model the uh, kind of general shape of this. And you can see that this is a, a fairly, um, I guess, good candidate for a revolve model. So I will do that. So I'll create a body, create a sketch. I'll grab this plane here. And then I will start off by uh, drawing a box. So this will be kind of the uh, outer wall. And then I'll grab a, a second box, kind of coming down for the inner wall, I guess the bottom. And then uh, a third box there, kind of this is the, the section on the bottom here where uh, we're going to cut the threads out of. And I think that is about it. And I'm going to grab my uh, trim tool. I believe this is the correct tool. And see, delete, delete. Looks like we got to uh, trim them again. Might have to zoom in on this one. Alrighty, delete. Okay, and we've got this, and I believe these should be connected together, but they are not, so we will uh, do that. I suspect this one here is having some, uh, some difficulties also. Alrighty, and we'll see if we can just delete this point. It does not like that sometimes. Um, you need to make them collinear for them to be deletable. Um, 
So we can try that. And uh, if that's not the case, then uh, we'll do something else. So it did not like that. I know in SolidWorks, you can't delete a point even if the two are, are parallel unless they have a uh, explicitly defined collinear relationship. Um, but that's okay. We can just do it manually. And if I if I'm missing something, um, you know, just go ahead and uh, let me know. We'll do the same thing for here. Alrighty, and I'm going to start out um, by measuring the inner diameter of this, and that might be a bit difficult to measure because my tool's not super long. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the outer diameter because I think I'd like to look at the the overall thickness and maybe make it a little bit thicker because my 3D printed resin is definitely not going to be as strong as this homogeneous mixture of plastic. Um, so we'll measure this. I think I'm I'm in there far enough that I'm over the threads. So we're 51. Point uh, let's see, we'll maneuver it about a bit, see if we can get a bigger number. 52.3 is looking like the biggest number that I'm getting. So I got, grab this, this, and a vertical dimension, 52.3 divided by 2. And then for my second dimension, I'm going to grab the internal diameter of this. We'll mosey it about, see if we can get a uh, more accurate number. Um, it looks like that's probably about good, 24.65. So that would be between here and here. 24.65 divided by 2. Okay, and for the overall distance, I guess overall thickness of this, I will be measuring it with the, the little tail of the calipers here. And let's see, looks like it's approximately 44.87, and that would be from this point to that point. So we'll do a horizontal constraint there, 44.87. And then for the overall, um, I guess, sticking outness of this bottom section, I've actually, uh, because I can't measure it here because it's, you know, snapped off. I, I went and uh, pre-prepared for the video by measuring that thickness. Um, so I'll, I'll draw it on the screen for you here. But it's uh, if I had, you know, a thing that looked like this, you know, I, I came in here, and and obviously this part here, you know, it it goes in and screws in there, but it snapped off. Um, I took the calipers here, and I uh, I went in and measured this section. So it would be this distance here is 4.5 millimeters, 4.5 millimeters. Um, so we'll get rid of that. And that would be this distance. And the reason, the reason I'm picking this distance here specifically um, is because this is the distance that uh, it needs to protrude into the, uh, I guess the mounting slot or the mounting hole. And uh, we don't want to include the thickness in that in case uh, we make it thicker, which I am planning on doing. So we'll do a horizontal constraint. So 4.5 millimeters is approximately the thickness that they were looking for. So we'll go five millimeters and we'll overshoot it just by a little bit. And then for the overall thickness, I'm going to grab some uh, construction lines here. And I'll do a horizontal line between these two. And I'll make this and this equal. 
And uh, let's see, that allows me to control the thickness of this. And I'm just gonna put these two points as vertical so that uh, we've got something stopping this from just floating about the screen. And I guess for now, we'll start by just modeling the overall thickness of this, which is uh, about 2.2 millimeters. I'll probably bump that up. It might end up double that. So a vertical constraint there. And let's say 3 millimeters, um, just for time's sake. And then this section here, um, I'll make this equal to the thickness also. So we're carrying that thickness throughout the whole part. All righty. And then we revolve about this axis and looking good already, looking good already. And uh, so next order of business is uh, cutting these threads in. And I'm going to start with the outside threads here. And I believe I should just be able to uh, put a sketch onto a plane. So I'll grab this plane here. And we'll start a sketch on there. And I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'm going to move this over to here, and I'm going to get rid of this. And we'll go grab our thread table, put that on the same screen. I'm going to swap these. OK. And uh, now we've got our internal threads here. And we're looking for a 30 by 1 um, external thread. And uh, if you're not familiar with the thread notation, the male external thread is, is normally denoted by a lowercase d. So I'm going to, uh, I guess, just model uh, one bit of this thread. And then uh, we'll see if we, uh, If we need any, I guess, any extra help, and I'll, I'll compare this thread against the against the existing thread that I, I know is there. We'll make sure it's about the right size, so we're not, you know, like completely off in the bushes. So I'll make this horizontal and that horizontal, and uh, let's see. I'm going to uh, put a point in here and here. And I will make this symmetric about that point and these symmetric about this point. And then I'll put these two points as vertical to one another. And that'll ensure that my part here is always symmetric left and right. And then for uh, D1 here on this thread, um, we're looking, of course, for the lowercase d1. Um, although I, I guess that this would be uh, not super important. So we actually have d3 here as our maximum. So d3 right here, 28.7700. Seven seven three, and you'll notice that uh, D three here is actually to this kind of point that doesn't exist, and then uh, you've got this height there that is the actual, um, I guess, second part of that dimension. So I'm going to uh, give myself some helping lines here. We'll do this and this. Are collinear, this one and this one collinear. And then uh, here we've got this, and this is going to be my point for uh, D3. So I'll grab this and 
I'll uh, hide the origin here so that I'm not grabbing it. We'll do a vertical dimension of, uh, let's see, 28.773. And this must be divided by two because, I mean, that is all bigger than the thread if it was the, uh, if it was the radius and obviously it's D, so it must be the diameter. Three divided by two. Okay. And uh, let's see, uh, that is not actually contacting the thread, um, which I guess is kind of concerning, but uh, that might just be an issue with uh, our earlier uh, I guess approximation. So we'll go back and we'll fix that, but we shall uh, push on for now. So I'm going to bring this over here and uh, let's see, I will dimension the 60 degree angle. Let's see, I think my angle is hiding here somewhere. We're looking for a 60 degrees. And then um, for big D, so this would be 30. And I'm actually just going to uh, put a point in here to represent that. And Grab between this and that, a vertical dimension. 30 divided by two is 15. And it looks like our thickness probably was enough. We were just uh, overestimating the size of this thread um, initially. So then um, we're looking for an H1 here. So distance between here and this horizontal bit, if I can select it. it oops, did not like that. And H1 is, uh, let's see. Oops, H1 is actually for a uh, female thread there. So we won't be uh, we won't be dimensioning using that. Um, we will be dimensioning using H three. So that means we need to change our uh, our diameter point reference from uh, oops from D to D two, which is the pitch diameter, which should be the same for both threads. So D two. Um, let's see if they give it to us is 29.35. So I shall modify this to be 29.35 divided by two. And then uh, referencing our, external uh, cutting bit from that. So we, yeah, we'll, we'll go back and we will uh, adjust to this original model to match this uh, H3 plus D2 um, diameter. But for now, I believe uh, we'll just take this here down and uh, Let's see, let's see. Is there a, it will be a minor diameter for an internal or for a uh, external thread, minor diameter. So 28.773 is the D3, which is uh, the distance from this point here to the center. Oops, clicked the wrong button. And 28.773 divided by two. And 
it does not like that. Is it because it is, uh, it is exactly the same as, uh, is something else? It is, uh, it is possible. So I'm going to uh, make a few changes here. So this minor diameter, we'll just uh, give it a little bit. Typically for, I believe for an external thread or maybe it's an internal thread, the, uh, the minor diameter is for reference only. Um, but we will, we will reference off of it the D1 here, which is 28.917. So we'll just do halfway between these two and that should be fine. You know, obviously you don't want your threads to be too close to one another, but that should give us plenty of space. So 28.773 plus 28.917, and then we want the quantity of that divided by four. That'll give us the average between the two of those. Okay. And then I believe we just have uh, this one section left here. And uh, we'll just dimension this to be big enough. because it's uh, it's not important because this part actually uh, ends up doesn't it ends up not contributing to uh, anything. So 17 there and I will I will just line this up here and uh, see if we can grab one of these faces. And we'll make this in this vertical just to uh, lock this in place. All righty. We will uh, exit the sketcher. And I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll, so I'm going to uh, revolve this around and then we can come back in and mess with this uh, diameter here and, and get it to be the right thing. So in order to do a cut sweep along a helix, I'm going to do that. And it looks like uh, that is actually not the correct button. We want the other one, the other helix. And then uh, it did pick the incorrect direction. So we'll do this. We will do reversed a pitch of one millimeter. And uh, a height, so depth that we want to go. We want to go, I believe we said it was five millimeters. And uh, looks like it's uh, acting all funky on us now. Um, maybe that remove outside of profile is uh, what we're looking for. I'm not quite sure why it uh, acts so strange it should it should just remove this uh, this section here um, and if it does not um, we will back this up and uh, try something different um, I was thinking that we might need to uh, do this anyways because otherwise it would have it would have kind of come through here and cut into this kind of face so I'm going to uh, take this sketch here and uh, I'll grab myself a new body. 
and I will reference that sketch in my new body and let's see it's possible this shape binder isn't going to like so can we move my sketch over to my new body how about the other shape binder Okay, can we do this? It does not like that. So we might end up just uh, needing to draw a new sketch here. That should be okay. Um, I, I suppose we do need a shape binder even if we are redrawing a sketch. And I shall grab this face and a sketch. And then I uh, will just uh, grab the edges here and I'll uh, connect them with points. So point, point, here, to there, and the last one. Okay. I will hide the binder and uh, now we'll do the helix. And we want this way. We want reversed pitch of one millimeter, height of uh, five millimeters. And we might go a little bit further with that height because we'll, we'll come by and, and chop it off. Okay, if I hide my original body, you'll see now I've got this kind of cutting tool um, that I can I can use and uh, we will let's see I will uh, I will chop it off first and then we'll go back and uh, make our mods to the original body second I think that sounds like a good plan I'll hide the origin there and I'm going to uh, shape binder this face from body to body zero zero one and i will hide body and with this face i'm going to make a plane and maybe it doesn't like that face that's okay we can uh, always select it again i'll rebuild and i'm just going to uh, extrude cut this datum plane and let's see we'll pick a big number like 50 centimeters or 50 millimeters and uh let's see it might want it to be reversed We'll see, this is a, a kind of sketchy um, maneuver. It is possible it's not going to uh, appreciate doing that. And it looks like it doesn't quite like that. Um, I will hide my binder and let's try again. Yeah, so it seems like it uh, it doesn't like doing that. So I'll just uh, I'll get rid of this binder here, or maybe I'll uh, I'll do a sketch on it, and uh, in this sketch I'll put in a circle, and we'll make this and uh, this outer circle here equivalent. And we will 
exit the sketch. I'll hide the binder and the datum plane. I'll just grab the sketch and we'll extrude cut that and see if it likes that better. And let's see, it is possible it would like it more if it were reversed. It is, it is tough to know. It is, uh, I think, let's see. We'll try turning up this dimension um, because it is possible that it doesn't like that two bodies are showing up. So if we turn this up and, and definitely cut through it, it might appreciate that more. Um, I guess it's kind of, you know, hit and miss though. So we'll try that both directions. Although I suspect if it didn't work in one, it won't work in the other. And let's see, that's kind of odd, this uh, broken face up there. Is that part of my sketch? It is not part of my sketch. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Um, Obviously, we can uh, we can do some kind of tomfoolery stuff where we where we get a uh, a third part and we uh, boolean subtract it from one side. So let's see. We'll come back to this. Um, we'll I'll keep thinking about what to do there. Um, for the time being, let's come back and edit this sketch. And this section here, number 27, is the uh, quality constraint controlling that thickness. And we shall get rid of that and we will replace that with uh, our H1 and D1 here. So I will grab this point down here vertical constraint and I want capital D1 which is 28.917 plus the uh, H1 lowercase H1 um, which I guess they don't uh, they don't give to us but we can obviously just use, uh, let's see, I believe we just use D here at 30. Oops, we need 30 divided by two. Okay. And now that that's updated, I'm not sure that changes anything, um, but you know, maybe, maybe it does. And for this bit, I might come in here and uh, edit this sketch to put this uh, a little bit lower. And maybe that helps with things being easier on, on the computer. Um, oops, looks like uh, I deleted something that was correct. So this one here, I want to delete. And let's see if I, if I grab this face here and uh, we make these two things just coincident. It might like it, it might, like, might not like it, we'll see. Um, and then I'm gonna come over here to body two and uh, adjust this helix until it's not sticking through the other end. So five is kind of, you know, getting there. Um, we'll, we'll just work with that for now and we'll see if it uh, comes back to bite us later. 
Um, I suppose we could just cut through all of them and then just uh, blow, I guess, blow through them once again. That sounds like a, uh, a better plan. So we'll go like uh, another rotation. Okay, and I'm going to grab these two bodies and come over to my Boolean tool. And let's see, let's actually cancel that and I'm going to uh, to save and then uh, body, I forget, I forget which way you select them, but I'll, I'll just select them that way. And uh, I think actually, let's uh, change our active body to be body one and then we will Boolean operate on or body, and then we'll Boolean operate on body zero, zero, 001. I think that sounds like a uh, like a better plan. And let's see. Looks like it's having some difficulties. My guess is this is caused from uh, this sketch being coincident on that face. Um, so I shall get rid of that constraint and uh, we'll just make them a little bit apart. So from here to here, a vertical dimension of, uh, let's go like 0.1 millimeters. That is uh, quite large for 0.1 millimeters. I shall try that again. And it appears that something has gone wrong. Um, I believe that this vertical constraint here ended up getting blown away. So put that back and uh, let's see if our, if our cutting tool works now. So on body one, I'm a Boolean cutting body zero, zero, 001. I guess on the first body and I'm Boolean cutting away the other body. Um, and that looks, that looks pretty good. Okay. And then uh, this kind of funky section, I'll uh, give us a section view here. Um, clipping plane is, I guess, a, a good way to do a graphics only section view. And uh, good thing about graphics only section view is it doesn't slow down anything. So it doesn't attempt to, you know, fill in this, I guess, section here. So it doesn't look pretty, but it is fast and that's all us, uh, you know, people care about. Um, you do see this kind of funky bit here where it's gone through and, you know, chopped into that side section a bit. Um, so I will, let's see, I will get rid of the clipping plane and I will come over to body 001 and we'll see if uh, I can adjust um, what I was doing before. I'll try the same thing now that it's not kind of such a, a funky you know, self-intersecting this and that geometry. Um, I guess we'll see if we can uh, if we can get it back. Um, yeah, I'm not I'm not too sure on this one. It seems like it's uh, like it's hidden from us forever, gone into the abyss. So I'll uh, I'll uh, get rid of this boolean operation and bring my body back here, and we'll switch over to body zero zero one, and I'll grab this datum plane and we'll see if we can extrude cut it now. 
but looks like it likes this much better. I guess that self-intersecting geometry was uh, given it a big fit. So we'll do 50 and uh, let's see, it does appear to be chopping off the right side. So now if we, if we hide this original body, you'll see that our, our thread, I guess, tool now terminates at the datum plane. So much better. Um, I will head back over to body, oops, not transform and toggle active, and we will Boolean operate on to body 001 once again. And a cut operation. Okay. Looking good. And then hopefully if we, if we section view now, um, we should not see such, uh, such funkiness going on on the inside there. So that's actually looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this, how it turned out. There is kind of some funkiness going on here, but that's that's acceptable. Doesn't affect anything. Um, that funkiness there is kind of, you know, funky, but what can you do about it? I don't know. Um, we'll, we'll hope that that's okay. It doesn't seem to be super much. I guess worst case scenario is maybe we get a little bit of a kind of funkiness in our in our model when we go to 3D print it, and maybe that causes us some trouble. But I think we're we're doing okay. And then luckily on the second side, we don't have to worry about cutting our threads too deep here because we've got loads of space, and it's not like anything's gonna hit us down there. And technically, I guess if you were if you were machining this this thread profile here is uh, impossible to machine because it has no relief so if you have a uh, a thread tool here right and we're, we're putting a thread into this face here you you come in here with your with your cutting tool you know maybe it's one of the ones that uh that goes around the outside of this thing you know it's got like little cutting things on the inside you know, or maybe you're doing this on a uh, on a lathe, and uh, you've got like a big, uh, like uh, let's see, big kind of tool with you know like a little finger sticking out of the end of it that you you bring down here. I, either way, um, you're going to need some amount of you know space at the end um, where your thread is not like fully full profile. Um, because your tool just doesn't have enough clearance to get all the way down to the end. We don't have that here, but because we're, we're 3D printing this, um, it doesn't matter. But if you were actually designing something to be manufactured, you'd probably do something like this, right? And then this section here, that's called relief. So that's like a, an area where, you know, they, they come in and it doesn't get a full thread um, and you've just removed it, right? And that allows your your tool here to butt up against the end of it. So could have put that in. Um, looking at the uh, the injection molded model here um, that's broken, I do see a little bit of relief. It's not much though. So I, I would be concerned about putting any thread relief in at all here. Um, obviously you could not cut this thread you know, with a, a cutter that uh, goes around here and, and, you know, spins. You'd need to use a lathe or you'd need to use some kind of injection molding. And obviously injection molding is, is great for these threads because, you know, they just fit into the machine and uh, you get perfect threads every time. So the wonders of injection molding, am I right? So moving on to the second thread here, my notes call out a 52 by 1.5. So 52 by 1.5 is this guy here. And I just try to keep the uh, title bar on the screen there. So we'll see. Oh, yep, we've got it. Okay. So over here, another sketch, I'll just do it on this plane.
and uh, I will save this, close it, and reopen that sketch. This is kind of a, a glitch that uh, shows up in this version. Um, where you, when you create a sketch, your your stuff disappears. I guess the the bodies in the body that you are currently editing disappears. Although it seems like this is uh, happening more often. I'll make sure I don't have the uh, clipping plane on, and I don't. Um, so let's uh, let's see if I can draw something, and maybe it'll show up. It'd be pretty unfortunate to uh, need to do this blind. And well, it seems like it's not going to uh, it's not going to help us. So I'll just uh, I'll sketch this in a, a second body and uh, we'll just bring it over at the end. So I'll uh, delete sketch 003 and then uh, grab myself a new body here. Oops, and I don't want this based on anything. Oop, great, so it's not based on anything. And uh, I'll start a sketch on this plane. And hopefully, uh, the other body, you know, shows up this time. So great, it does. Um, and I will grab my my reference points. I guess once it uh, stops thinking, I guess those threads are, are taking a toll on it. Um, but I will grab this. Uh, Alrighty, now I've got a shape binder. I'm actually going to hide the original body and maybe that'll help us. Although I suspect it's it's got this uh, thing where it's trying to rebuild every time we, we close this. Um, something about our, our Boolean it's not happy with, but it is able to rebuild it, I guess. Not quite sure what's going on there, but you know. So editing this sketch, I shall grab the inside, um, not quite what I was looking for. That's more like what I was looking for. And maybe I'll delete this, okay. And for our inside, we need a tooth that looks like this. And then um, let's see for our inside thread. Yeah, so our, our inside thread here, we got to make sure that this diameter here is modeled as D1, which is 28.917. Um, and I suspect that it is probably not modeled like that. So we'll go back and uh, fix that right now. That would be part of it, this sketch. And 26. Let us see. Oops. So we, um, we were looking at the wrong thread there. This is supposed to be um, D1 here, obviously is uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just grab this for both of us. So we're looking at this line here. This 50.376. So we'll come over here and I will edit this one to be 50.376 divided by two. And see it moved in a little bit there. And this is taking a bit because it's got to uh, rebuild this and then recut those threads through. Um, but it looks like we're doing okay there. 
And then for this internal thread, um, it looks like I'm going to put in a little bit of a flat top on this guy. So I will do that and we'll make this horizontal, that horizontal. Um, see if I can grab the trim tool, get rid of both of them and we'll replace them with, uh, let's see, might not, might not replace them with anything, I guess. Um, I'll put in my two points here. We'll do this one as a point on a line do a symmetric constraint to get those points centered. And then uh, come over here. Oops. And I'll just uh, put in like a little, uh, make these two bits here vertical. And then I'll put in a vertical constraint, vertical dimension of 0.1 millimeters, just like I did with the other one. And we'll bring the center over. We will dimension the 60 degrees. And let's see if we can, uh, we can get some other thread bits in here. So the, I guess the top of this thing is the big D. So that would be 30 millimeters. So distance between this and this is 30. And uh, I guess we need, oops, I'm looking at the wrong line again. This is 52 divided by two. And then, uh, believe all we need now is the uh, the pitch of the thread which is one millimeter so we'll do a horizontal dimension or it's 1.5 millimeters um, horizontal dimension there and I think I think this is uh, this is it this was much easier to dimension than the other one we'll see if this one uh, looks good. And I guess for, for time's sake, we will uh, we'll just do the same kind of Boolean operation thing with this one. And let's see, switching back over to our, our model here, um, we can see the inside of this, you've got quite a few threads down there. Um, I shall, I shall count them. We have, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five threads. Um, so probably looking at like a, like a six or seven pitches. So let's see, pitch is 1.5. The height would be 1.5 times seven. Alrighty, and it is possible that this is going the wrong direction. Um, it does appear to be the case. So I will edit my helix and we need the horizontal sketch axis and see it's cutting inside there. And uh, looks like that's doing a-okay. Alrighty, I'll get rid of the origin and I'll switch back over to body and grab body two and we'll do a Boolean operation. I suppose I should uh, probably save at this point, but we'll get that uh, if, if, it, if it dies, but it looks like it's doing okay. So that's, uh, that's always good. Alrighty, I'll save this 
And uh, are there any extra features in here that uh, we need to model? I don't think there are. Um, this looks pretty, pretty standard. Um, so I guess I will, uh, I will 3D print this and uh, we'll see if it, if it fits. Um, I guess right before we leave though, I might add a, a like a little chamfer on to the end of these two bits of thread. I'm less concerned about this one, but this one down here gets some pretty, uh, some pretty thin sections. So in order to do that, I shall, uh, shall grab the origin here. And we'll do a, a sketch. Hopefully it doesn't disappear. And it does appear to have disappeared. So close that. I guess we will we will do this in a another body once again, and uh, we shall transfer it over. Or alternatively, I suppose we could uh, we could come back to this original sketch and, and just put the chamfers in right here. That sounds like a much better plan. So I shall grab a line and for a chamfer on this one, I'll do that. And then uh, I'll grab an angle here and we'll just do this as 45 standard chamfer. Or I guess it's, it's picked uh, the other direction. So this would be 90 plus 45, I believe 135. And then uh, for over here, um, let's see, I don't, I don't think we need a chamfer there. I think that one's doing, doing okay. Maybe we'll put a little chamfer in. And uh, grab the angle tool again. And 135. We'll make these two chamfers equal in length. And then uh, I shall dimension from here to here, a vertical dimension of uh, like 0.25 millimeters. Um, maybe that's a bit too small. Um, let's, let's take it up and we'll see if we got like a 0.4. And uh, we need to let's see. Yes, we need to trim this and that. And it did get rid of my dimensions, which is what I was concerned about. Um, so, in thinking about this, this would this would break uh, some of our our stuff. So maybe this is not a great idea for here. Um, let's back out of there and uh, let's add it in at the end once again with a uh, a boolean dimension, or I guess a boolean cut. Lots of lots of booleans. Um, I don't think you should need them normally, and we don't really need them here. It's just a graphical issue it stops us from uh, from actually being able to see the thing that we're sketching on. Unfortunately. So um, I'll come back to the original body, and I'll hide that and grab this and then uh, I grab the sketch from the original and I will uh, shape binder it. All right, I'll hide the sketch, hide the original body and uh, I'll come down here and sketch on this plane. All righty. And we just need like a, a couple lines make this one horizontal. And I'm going to grab 
this. I'll make this one here horizontal with that one. And then these two here can be equal. And I'll put in a construction line between this one and here, and between this one and here, although I missed that second point. And we'll make these two construction lines equal. At this point, we should have a, uh, I guess, a, a chopping bit. And uh, I'll put in another point there, and I'll, uh, I'll make this point point on a line the vertical line there. This will give me a nice dimension. And I will do a 0.5 millimeter cut. And then we'll, we'll revolve this around and then uh, Boolean subtract once again. Uh, righty, so sketch and a revolve. And this axis, okay. And then uh, switching over to this body and then grabbing body three and a Boolean subtract. And we want a cut. Okay. And I'm not too worried that I can't see it here because it's actually uh, hidden from my view. And if this doesn't go through, then, you know, we'll do some more investigation, but um, seems like it should work. I don't see any reason why it shouldn't. Um, and looks like maybe we need a slightly larger chamfer. So I shall come back down here and edit my sketch. And maybe we'll make this a, uh, oh, a one millimeter chamfer. Um, and that looks better. Maybe, maybe like a 1.5 millimeter chamfer. Although that, that is that is cutting into it like quite a bit. So maybe 1.1, 1 .1, maybe one. I, I really don't wanna take off this uh, second peak here. So maybe we'll go like 0.8, okay. And that is looking better. And I think at this point, um, we're done with this. I'm thinking I'll probably do a, a second very short video about uh, how to place this object in, uh, in the slicing software um, for my, my 3D printer, which would be a Chi2 box, which is not great, but it is, it is free and uh, you know, it is on, on my platform. So, um, and then, and then, I guess maybe maybe a third video just talking about uh, how it goes and maybe making any modifications that we need to in order to get this thing to work. I suspect we probably messed up one of these threads, um, you know, to the point where it's where it's just not going to fit at all. But maybe maybe it does fit. You never know. You never know. So, you know, thank you for thank you for uh, sticking with us. I think it's been quite some time since the video started. I hope you, uh, you learned something. And uh, I hope to see you again in uh, video, I believe would be 11.2 is the next one.